Got me a new old figure for the shelf. I think they have a new Crow movie coming out. I think I read that somewhere. I haven't seen anything about it. I like them. I don't usually like the figures that don't articulate good. He's cool. It's cool. She'll go up there with them. Put them behind Blade right next to Spawn. It's like a good home for him. That's all the six inch figures I have now. I got rid of all of them. Let's get my favorites. Here's my favorite. Custom Iron Man I did years ago. Some of them. War Machine's not customized. Should've. Would've looked good. Maybe one day. Favorite movie, Matrix, Blade, and that's close to Blade and Matrix favorite movies. Of course, Spider Man, hell. All kids like, I've liked Spider Man since I was a little kid. <laughs> Got to have Spider Man, huh? Hey guys and girls, look what I'm finally working on again. Yeah, about a year later. Sorry about that. I got something new for Mr. Grimlock. Got me motivated to finish him. A little add on. Uh, you won't get to see this put on on this video, unfortunately, but. We'll get a little bit of painting started again. Finally hand brushed this guy. Started some of it. I'll have to go back and clean these like I did in the first video. For this video for the hand painting, we're going to be using the Model Masters acrylics. I showed these on the first video because I thought I was going to get to the hand painting on it. But we used a uh, lacquer based Model Master. That was airbrush only for the gold. I don't think I mentioned that in the first video, so I hope no one got confused there. That, that was a lacquer-based paint that we airbrushed with, and now we're using acrylic to do the rest. Figures. All right, let me come back and show you what we're going for here. Ah, Grimlock. We're going to make that figure look like that. Maybe even better. Always strive to be better. I like to put my uh, characters, find a good CGI, put them on my screensaver. Way every day I walk by them, I can look at the detail and see what else we can paint next. Take a real good look at that picture real quick. Notice how any deep spots that are way, uh, well, let me word this right. Any crevices that are deep are black, obviously, darked out. So, in painting in 3D, we pretty much black out the whole section and then start with our colors, with our colors gradually stepping up in light uh, to the very lightest colors on the edges, just like you see on this two dimensional picture. I guess it's going to be two-dimensional to you guys anyways, but yeah, you know what I mean. When you got your figure in front of you, you're painting on a 3D figure, so we're going to have to keep that in mind, and let me show you some of the steps and techniques I do to try to capture this look. Well, I'll be back with some uh, parts, some different steps of the hand brushing. Alright, our 
basic colors we're using. That flat black. That's primarily for his head and his hands. If you notice, his shoulders and thighs were a dark charcoal, not quite black. Uh, I've done a mixture for that, and I'll show you what I did on that. So we've got flat black. I have gunmetal, gunmetal gray, and neutral gray, which is the light gray. Uh, that's our main primary colors. Of course, we've got a lot more going in there. The red for the lights and white and silvers and all that. But we're going to concentrate on this video on getting all the base colors down. And even the panel lining and shadowing. So, I've got four limbs here. I've taken them all to different lengths of uh, painting. There's one kind of basic. It's been brushed with the light gray and a mixture of gunmetal and light gray. I've mixed about 50-50 on these to create this medium color. See that picture good? So pretty basic right here. Uh, what I do, I'm going to show you this in a minute. I'm going to go over these parts and then I'll show you some of the actual painting on one of these parts. Let's just try to take all this in first before we get to the actual brushing. I use larger brushes for the bigger areas, you know, do one good coat coming close to my edges, come back in with a nice smaller brush and really come make the edges real nice and clean up to my gold. Uh, if you guys are really worried about coming over, I actually got some right there on it. So if you're worried about that, you can tape it up. Just be very careful. Uh, normally I don't have to worry this much when I'm completely hand painting a character. But since we airbrushed this first, we're going to try to stay away from getting messes on our gold. Same thing when you're doing a shiny uh, finished figure. There's some parts to prime. Age of Extinction Prime, there's a shield. I did the base coat red first, and now I'm doing in all the dark, and I'll do dry brushing of silver over that. Uh, then do a gloss coat over the whole thing. That's a different technique, kind of similar, but different. So I'll go over that technique on another figure another time. So anyways, we've got I've got maybe two coats, two or three coats of each color. I think I only have two of the gray. Yeah, it's not much. So you do these in real light coats, all right? I'll go over that in a minute. Actually, let's uh, let's go over that now. Let me get a part ready. Well, I'll paint one the first coat with you on camera. I guess we'll do this piece. Right. Come right back to it. All right, as always, shake your paint up, stir it up, shake it up again, and we're good to go. You dip your brush, get all the excess paint off. You don't want a big glob just flop down on there. I'm going to do this one. I'm going to go up with the lines to the edge first on most of this, uh, which ain't many. It's not many, mainly right here. Real fast, light strokes. You can go back and forth. I find going the same direction helps you keep a straight line if you're trying to put a good straight line on the area. You don't want to try to cover the whole thing in the first coat. Let's get a real nice light coat on there. It's not going to be fully covered. It's actually going to look awful on the first coat. At least things look awful till you get to the end of them. And bring all the detail together. That's very rough, but you get the idea. Go take a small, I even have a smaller brush, a very small one, which I advise getting many different size brushes. Soft bristle brushes are 
your best bet. You don't want hard bristles because they'll leave uh, brush strokes all in your paint and look awful. So, different size brushes. Some water to clean this brush off real quick. And then you can come in after you do the panel lining, go on with your thicker brush. And I've got a good little bit of paint on this brush. And when you start, just start pulling it. Spread that paint as far as you can spread it. And there's a point with this uh, acrylic paint. If you keep going over the same spot, same spot, same spot, you'll eventually, this gray is not as bad, some colors are worse, but you'll eventually start pulling the paint back off after it starts half dry. It dries pretty quick to the touch. Now, I've found with this paint, it's it's awesome paint for plastic. I haven't found anything better. At this point, of course, it just dried. Now, see, it's dried to the touch. But I can still scratch it off. But now, if you wait and come back to this tomorrow, it is almost impossible to scratch that off. That's how awesome and how much it bonds with the plastic. So, real fast, you know, feather strokes, I call them, lightly. And this, believe it or not, will wear your arm out. Way up here in your uh, shoulder. Yeah, after a while, you'll see. It'll start getting to you. I'm doing this kind of backwards. Sometimes I, I do this area completely black to get down in the crevices and stuff. I'm going to show you two different techniques on this figure. One starting off with the dark area, bringing it up to lighter colors. And then like this section, it's going to be a lighter color, and I'm going to do a wash on it to where the darker colors fall down in the crevices. And that'll be the next step I'll show you. So there, there's one coat. I'll go ahead and put it, finish this other side. I recommend waiting at least an hour between coats. If you want to wait the 24 hours, you're going to be guaranteed a very durable uh, coat of paint. So, pretty much three coats will cover, unless you have a really thin color that doesn't coat very well at all. This gray is pretty good. Flat colors seem to coat better than gloss colors on this acrylic. I stay away from the metallics in the acrylic because they're too transparent. They don't coat or cover at all, hardly. So, flats is what I love most in the acrylic. And if you want shiny, you can put a gloss over it. I use lacquer for most of my gloss, though. Lacquer and acrylic will mix fine one over the other. Preferably a lacquer first and then acrylic over it. Never do enamel over acrylic for sure. I wouldn't even I wouldn't put enamel over anything really. Uh, sometimes I use it for the detail, real small copper and gold spots. Uh, it doesn't seem to be that bad, but enamel will crack and stay tacky most of its life. It just doesn't dry good. Anyways. Got one coat on that, real fast, quick coat. Spread the paint everywhere we can get it. I don't know if you can see that well, but it's not coated very well at all. But it's gonna be perfect. There's one. I'll let that dry for a while. That's equal to what I've done here, I think. Maybe have two coats on this one. I'm gonna do a few more. Uh, then our next step, after we get this uh, third coat of gray, We'll start doing the wash, the panel line. With this figure here, this part here, excuse me, is just gray and the darker gray so far. And we're gonna come in next and sneak some dark black down in the edges. Let me show you how I do that. Uh, actually, we're not gonna use black. We're gonna use the gunmetal. It's almost black. <coughs> You can use black if you want it darker. But I believe the gun metal is just right for what I'm doing here. I just want a darker shade down in there. Alright, for the 
for the panel lining, especially the small ones, I'm going to use my small brush. Have some uh, nice clean water here. They make acrylic thinner, uh, which I would recommend using if you're going to thin down a lot of paint. Uh, there's a few ways we can do this panel lining. We can go straight from this right on, right on the part. It's going to be heavy. Take a, After I dip this in here, wipe the edges off, I barely touch my brush, barely down in the water, just the tip of it, just to thin out the paint that's on here. Barely touch it on, little napkin I'm using. Now I have thin down paint on my brush. I'll let it fall down into the crew. Look, we mess up, rub it off real fast. Real fast rub it, and look, it's a perfect line down in the groove. Hope you guys can see that good. Ooh, kind of got the shapes. I don't know if I can do this on film. I'm not nervous. Just, hmm. uh, nerves. Hmm. Alright. Let's do a little bit more. Show you some other sections. All this, everything deep. I'm going to touch it with the dark color. And if we get on any, any on the edges, wipe it off real fast. All this. Actually, I'm messing up here. I don't need to panel on this. This still needs more base coats. But you get the idea of what I'm doing there. This one was ready. I think I've got most of it. So I've even went all the cracks. Every little edge, crevice. I'll run this dark color right down. Every little line. That really makes your edges pop. And you have that dark next to them that'll really stand out when we go to do the light detail on them all the stuff that's lit up man when we do the solid red and then the lighter red in the center and then do black around the edge it just makes that light really stand out to where it'll almost it should almost look like the CGI we just looked at uh, that's gonna be a, towards the end this is a lot of work to paint these like this here's the leg it's about the same as that other arm I showed you. It has the base coats. This one has most of the panel lining. It's messy. See, it's not clean. It's not real clean yet. And we can still come. I can go back over this, and I will, with more gray, real lightly. And if we get any down in the lines, I'll just go back over, panel line it. Remember, we can keep going back and forth and clean up the edges with each color. So you want to get everything solid here. And then after we get all the solid color on this thing, we can really start coming into the edges, cleaning everything up, making it nice and neat. And we'll have a really sharp figure at the end. Uh, here, all these, all these parts, I, I get way down in here. This is with the gunmetal. Like I said, I'm using all gray and gunmetal on these parts, except for the fist and head. They're solid black. Uh, here's a quick tip to paint those two. Hand, you stick them on a brush. That way you can paint all around. Then later, after it's dry, we can get down in the hole and paint down in there. And then we'll go back and dry brush these with a light gray so all the edges are highlighted. It's very easy to do. Same concept as dry brushing the metal color. Uh, his arms, solid gun metal. That's two coats, I think, there. I'll go ahead and do a third coat and use a small brush to get down into the grooves. There's still some plastic showing down in there. So, let's get a... That's a good start. If I can finish up a few more of these parts and come back. You see the basic, you know, get all your... Get all your solid colors. Get you at least three coats of all your solids. And once you get that, you can do the wa the washing, all the detail, 
clean up the edges. When we get all that solid, we do the lights and the other small detail. So let me go over some dry brushing with you, which I can go ahead and do on these hands and head. I have three coats on those. Just do a real fast one. I'm going to use a solid gray, the neutral. Let's do the head. It looks pretty cool, dry brush. You guys ever, uh, any of you remember the I don't remember what they were called. It was pieces of paper that somehow it had a picture or pattern on them and you would take a pencil, scribble across it, and then it would show the design. It's similar to what we're doing here. I've dipped my brush in here. I'm going to dry it off real good. Not completely. Almost though. It's a very dry brush, right? Now, we're going to feather real fast over the edges of of this whole head. Watch how easy this is. Now we have a highlighted head. Hopefully you can see that good. Uh, looks like it's showing quite a bit gray. Doesn't really look that bad. From my viewpoint. Hmm. If it's too much, we can do what we were doing here. And drop some dark colors back down in the crevices again. Of course, I'm going to have to paint his eyes. Okay. There's a quick dry brush on black with light gray. You can do any color on it if you wanted. You can do purple. I don't know why you'd want to, but yeah, you can dry brush any lighter color over a darker color. You give the effect you want. Next step would be to show you how these would look dry brushed with silver. And what I use for silver, I go back to the lacquer. Like I said earlier, the acrylics, the acrylic metallics they have, like the silvers and steel, all those metal type colors from the Model Master acrylic, they don't coat very well at all. They're just way too transparent. What I have here is Model Masters uh, Silver. It used to be called Chrome Silver. It's a really bright silver that coats very well. One coat of this will cover. But we're going to dry brush it like we did the light gray just then. Um, I said I was going to put another coat of black on that. I can go ahead and do the dry brush and then sneak another coat. Let me just go on and show you. Because if I do a coat of black, I'm going to have to let that dry. I'll probably come back to it tomorrow. So let's see here. Where I've shook it up, I've got plenty in the top. So I'm just going to stick the tip of my brush barely in that top. Same thing. Come over here. This time I want to dry it off very good because that lacquer is very thick. So now our brush is dry. Again, real fast. Don't just plop it down in one spot or you'll have a big blob of silver. Come from the edge and quickly pass over. Quickly pass over, feathering up and down, left and right, covering it. Uh, I may have dried it a little too much. It's okay, we can keep going over it. 
put it a little heavier. There's different uh, technique. There, there's different thicknesses and heavinesses you can do with this silver to create a different effect. You can very lightly do it and look like a really dark metal, or you can do it real heavy and look almost silver. So I'm gonna go about in the middle. What we're doing here, we're just catching the edges. We're highlighting the edges. That's all we're really doing. See that? And just flick it, flicker it back and forth. Feather it, flicker it, whatever. And now we've got our metal look. I don't know if you can really see that on the camera, hopefully. Uh, any of you that's watched my steel picture slideshow videos know what this effect looks like, especially captured in a picture. So, still, that's not done. Of course, I got to do the upper part. Once that dries good, I'll I'll lightly hold it. At this point, no matter how good that dries, this will rub off of there. It will rub off. So I'll show you what we do. Keep that from happening. Let's go on and finish this. Since it rubs off anyways, I'm gonna handle it very lightly on those corners, those tips. Finish this thing. There's actually a couple different things we can do at this point. You can take some lacquer clear coat. I prefer Model Master, or no, it's not Model Masters. What is it? It's uh. One Coat Lacquer by Testers. Wet Look Clear. Yeah, that's one of my favorite clears. If you want to spray a can coat of clear over this, that'll protect it and keep it from rubbing off. I'll grab one of those and show you what I'm talking about now. Or, or, remember those transparent lacquers? Or, excuse me, the transparent acrylics that I said I do not like? Yeah, I do have some. Here's a steel color. Now we can act like this is a clear and heavily dry brush it over this. Uh, maybe another hour or two or even wait till tomorrow. And that'll protect it without such a gloss look. Oops. Let me grab the uh, spray I was telling you about. Alright, this is my favorite lacquer spray paint clear. It's testers one coat lacquer. I mean, it changed this cover not long ago. It's wet look clear. 1834 wet look clear. This stuff's high. Uh, it's uh, these all it, all this paint's high. Like four dollars a piece for these. Five fifty six dollars for the thing. Uh, but uh, you gonna put this kind of time into a figure and spend this much uh, time painting it? And why not, you know, spend the extra money and get good paints so it'll last. You don't want your art fading away, rubbing away. So, I'm going to hit that up with the clear. I'm going to get them both done. And Actually, I may not on this one. I'm going to go over it with this. Because I've got parts on here that will be dry brushed too with the silver. And I don't want to spray that clear over this whole thing. So, yeah, I'm going to hand brush this one. Uh, there's some dry brushing, some base coats, uh, a little bit of a wash technique. Let me show you real quick that wash technique in a little different sense. Gunmetal gray again, and my top's destroyed. Right, Gunmetal gray. Get all that paint off that brush I can. I'm using my middle, a little bit thicker brush. Dipped it barely in water. Touched it on my napkin to remove the excess so it's not dripping. And right here, I'm going to try to let this fade away, being thin. That's actually very watered down. The more watered down it is, it'll fall down in the cracks and you can even rub it away or it'll kind of evaporate on top and leave the darkness 
down in the crevices. I mean, you can water it down a lot and just go wild with it and let it fall down in the place and rub everything away that's on the outside. See that darkened it up slightly. And you can come back with a solid, solid paint on your brush. And I'm going to paint that solid and dry brush it silver. I do want it thinned down on the edge where it kind of fades away as it meets the gray, the light gray up here. I don't want just a blunt edge. I want a fading away gray, darker gray there. Remember, when you plop that paint down, go ahead and spread it out as far as you can. It's thinned down pretty good, but it's alright. Spread this out good. Uh, real quick, too, uh, you see how I even paint the backs of my pieces. As I mean, I've noticed in pictures years back when I only painted sections that sometimes plastic would stand out in the picture and look awful. So I really started concentrating on painting every square inch of these figures uh, if you don't take them apart completely like I did I could have unscrewed this arm but it's got pins through here and I didn't feel like knocking all those out uh, I can show you on another video how to get some of those out but for the most part I'll just fold them once they're good and dry get the brush down oh I got a lot of paint on there Oops. brush it down in where I'm painting and pull it up, pull up, pull up, pull up. If you go back down, you're going to get it all over the edge. If you going away from the edge, up, up, deep, deep, bringing it up to the edge, you'll just have a nice edge there. You won't get as much on the outside. And if you do, no big deal. Look, I made a mess right there. But we can take gray, come right back over all that, clean it up. Like I said, towards the end, we'll clean up all the edges, make everything nice and neat and tidy. And much closer to having him finished. So there's a few things. Sorry it's taken me so long to get back around to this figure. I've got some really awesome subscribers and viewers. So I'm more than glad to show you whatever I know here. I'll be honest with you guys, I say I've been painting these for seven years. Uh, the first few years I was painting Transformers, it felt like a competition. It was uh, me, me, me. Let's see how good I can do, how much better I can do it than the next person. And let's see how much more mine will sell for on eBay than yours. And lo and behold, that created this big, chaotic uh customizing frenzy on eBay that had people boosting bids, uh, it's lying to each other. You go on there and see people bidding on a custom figure within an hour or two of being listed up to $800 already, which was complete bogus bids on for the most part. It got ridiculous. Anyways, what I'm getting to is I finally got that mindset away and started sharing instead. Man, what a better feeling that was. Uh, keeping all this bottled up like, oh no, it's my secrets. I'm not going to tell the next person. That was an ugly feeling. Uh, like I said, it was that competition type feeling like, oh no, I have to do better than you. Uh, when it feels much better to share what you know with the next person and let them grow also So I want to see better and better figures. I want to see better figures from all of us uh, <laughs> The the body you're in too, that figure too, not just a plastic toy. Let's all make everything a little better guys from our toys to our bodies well, hopefully I've got a few pointers in here for you guys to get started on uh, hand brushing. So, let me get some more done and some more pointers. And I'll come back with part three, hopefully sooner than a year. Like, honestly, it should be very soon. Because 
I've got motivated to work on this guy again, so I'll have something here in the next week or so. Thank you very much for your patience. Thank you for watching. And if you want to catch what I did, the airbrushing, I'll try to put a link in the description for the first video. And uh, catch you guys on the next one. Thanks again for watching. Peace.